This is an I Am Listening original podcast. We have one employer who started off with one of our students, then took on another, and they've modified their whole business plan now to actually include our students rather than taking on older students because they can see that they are gaining the skills and knowledge that they need to help run the business the way that they want to. It's been a real success for the students and for the employer. Welcome to the Hit List GCSE Surgery Podcast with East Kent Colleges Group from EKC Canterbury College, hosted by me, Numi Gildert. I'm joined by a panel of education experts as well as students, and we're going to be giving you advice on what's next and also what you can expect in your next step of your education journey. In this episode, we're talking about T-levels, how they're structured, how they differ from other qualifications and why they might be best suited to you. The Hit List GCSE Surgery with East Kent Colleges Group, a family of six community-based colleges. See where at ekcgroup.ac.uk. One of the new qualifications that has just been brought into the UK is T-Level. It's a really exciting new qualification, but not many people might know much about it. So I'm joined by Heather Williams, who is an industry liaison officer and a T-Level ambassador at Folkestone College. I'm going to ask you, if you hadn't heard of it before, how would you describe a T-Level? Okay, I would describe the T-Level as a really, really good alternative to A-Levels for those students who are looking forward to pursuing a bit more of a hands-on career. It's open every single year that we operate, more and more subjects are added. The one that we focus on is on-site construction. We're in our third year in September. And the main thing for it is the really large part of it is work experience. So we work with the students to find a suitable placement, match them with an employer. Then they get 45 days in that one. There are different um, lengths of time, such as if you're in early years. And then they have really, really good time out with the employers. They get to learn about business. It's fantastic for their CVs and makes them really, really employable at the end. So it's a combination of work experience and then is it like traditional coursework, exams? Correct, yes. It's um, very different to the, in fact, the exact opposite to apprenticeships, which are 80% with the employer and 20% in college. With the T-levels, you have 20% out on site and 80% in college. So they learn about the theory of what they're doing, for example, for construction, the theory of construction. They have some time that they have to learn things at home. They have exams employer set projects so it's very theory based as well but they also get the all round of having the practical skills learnt in the workshop and also again the work experience so they can kind of apply what they've learnt in the classroom hands on exactly Andy Black technical industries lecturer at Broadstairs College you lecture in computing what are the kind of benefits of then having that structure so having that 80% in classroom learning theory and then applying it in in the realms of computing? I think from a computing perspective, one of the benefits of the students getting work placement is they're using the skills they learn to work with an employer. And because more and more companies and organisations are moving into digital realms, and I work primarily in computing and digital, the ability to have experience and understanding of the theory of things like cloud computing and or how to build a network or how to build a program or an application. That then is readily available skills that the employer can use. Also, the student benefits from that environment because they're also coming in with a fresh mind. And an employer often has to deal with legacy-based systems. So if we're training our students in the, in, in the theory and the hands-on capabilities to then work with employers, it's a really good trade-off for both parties, from both the student perspective and the employer perspective. So then is it possible for a student to move on from that apprenticeship as, as part of the T-level, that work experience, into a full-time job? It, it is possible that the local employer may, for example, want to, to, to make a job offer to that particular student, and that does happen. But a T-level in itself also gives a whole variety of options to the student. They could, for example, use their T-level qualification, which equates to the UCAS tariff, and go to a university place. So one of the key things a T-level opens up is work experience, practical skills. And because a T-level is based around the needs and the skill sets that the economy needs, you know the people who've gone through that particular course have a very practical sense of applying skills 
for situations in work. So it's making people work ready and also work for the future. One of the key things about the TEA level is they, they get the experience of seeing things coming together, not in an academic context, but in a professional business work context. I think that's the key thing and the key benefit for a student. Yeah, because I think if you're coming from a very traditional academic background and then even you know, doing A-levels, going to university, it's quite common for, for people to go through an entire university degree without doing any work experience or placements and not really having any idea how business functions. Because it's not just about, particularly in something technical, being able to do the job, being able to write the program or create the network. It's also about working with people seeing how an organisation functions. And one of the key things we do is supporting the curriculum based around the computing is also equip people with skills around emotional intelligence and critical thinking. So when when they enter the workplace, they're actually able to function and operate at a very high level in in that environment. Amazing. Whereas an academic qualification doesn't necessarily equip people with those life skills. Yeah, and that is so valuable. Is sometimes a slight misconception, I think, because we have this legacy of an A-level, that a T-level is not at the same standard. How would you debunk that, Heather? Um, it's definitely year by year increasing in knowledge popularity. That is one of the things that we do at the college. We try to raise awareness of the T level. A lot of the times um, we have students who, whose parents or guardians may actually be employers and we just get the word spread about how good it is. More and more universities are obviously seeing the benefits of it and the network of employers, they all talk to each other, especially in the construction world, and they do actually see the calibre of students coming through and how important they are to the businesses. Um, We have one employer who started off with one of our students, then took on another, and they've modified their whole business plan now to actually include our students rather than taking on older students because they can see that they are gaining the skills and knowledge that they need to help run the business the way that they want to. It's been a real success for the students and for the employer. The Hit List GCSE Surgery with East Kent Colleges Group. Take your future to the next level with T-Levels. Visit ekcgroup.ac.uk. I'm going to ask again, Heather, I know that you've got that slight focus on um, the construction T-level at Folkestone, but what other T-levels are available in Kent? As I say, it's increasing every year. I know, obviously, in Folkestone we have the new one starting, which is in the business department, which is management, and uh, we also have early years, other T-level courses across the different campuses. It does depend where you are. I know in Canterbury they have design surveying and planning, for example, somebody who might want to become a quantity surveyor. Hair and beauty is coming in, catering, really, you name it. In in the next year or so, there are going to be just about every area you can think of will have a T-level. Wow, that's amazing. That's like such a broad area of subjects. I'm going to ask Andy. So it's 80% in the classroom, But it's not just in the classroom, is it? So what kind of learning environment will the students be doing their T-level? At the um, T-level in digital design we do it at Broadstairs, they build networks, they build computer networks. So part of the key skill is how do you actually build a network? They do programming. So they actually learn code, they learn Python, they build applications. They do robotics. They look at artificial intelligence. We take them through all these course things to get hands-on skills because without anyone can read about something, but the biggest thing is to get your sleeves rolled up and get stuck into it. That's the only way you really learn. And I come from business background, not academia. So alongside that, I say the importance is look at what you can do with these particular applications. What could you do with them? Let's build something. We said exercises. So they learn by learning, by building, by creating. And that then builds the skill set up. So as they gradually go through the whole of the curriculum, they end up hugely well-rounded and the way the course works is they then do practical exams or tasks using code to build applications and when they finish they are a finished product they've learned about python they've learned how to code they've learned how to build networks they're supremely well qualified that they could either go directly out into work i'm encouraging many of them to, to think about starting their own businesses yeah 
even things like building websites, there's a huge lack of e-commerce websites in businesses around here which are effective. Yet they're very simple to build. And once you know and can master that, it gives you not only potential side hustle around other jobs, it gives you those skills you can then utilize that you've learned. So I think I think part of it is learning practical skills, not not theory, yeah. practical skills. And learning by doing as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Rachel, I'm going to ask you a question. I gave you a break because you did a lot of talking, but now I'm back to you. So if someone was interested in a T-level, what would be the first step for them for exploring that avenue? Okay, so if they're interested in it for the future, it would be the, the same really as route as before, coming into open days, um, coming to meet the departments, coming to, to talk to the staff, see the facilities, and then they would apply for it on a, on a website. So for EKC Group, they, they would apply on, on that website whichever provider look up the details read all the information and ap- apply like that and then just a more general question that's only just popped into my head for heather how long is a t-level is it two years is it one year it's a two-year course so um, it does depend on which subject you're studying as to the structure of the course for example we have quite a theory heavy first year with our t-levels on on-site construction and in the second year it's focusing more on the practical skills which follow on from the workplace as well a lot of them start work placement in the first year so like you said they they can actually apply what they've learned both ways in in the workshop to their when they're out on work experience and work experience they can understand what they're doing when they go into the workshop as well and what kind of facilities do you have at Folkestone for the construction T-level? We have workshops which are specific to areas such as carpentry and joinery or painting and decorating or large brick workshop. We also have a dedicated room which is laid out in a very professional type environment. They've got a boardroom. They obviously have all their computers and laptops, etc. for them to use. So when they do their theory, they are in a very professional environment, which is also used when we have employers to come in and visit and talk to them, give them an overview of the industry. Amazing. Thank you so much. Can we get a round of applause for our lovely feeling? Thanks for listening to the Hitlist GCSE Surgery Podcast with East Kent Colleges Group from EKC Canterbury College. For more information, you can head to ekcgroup.ac.uk and you can find the rest of the episodes of this podcast series at im-listening.co.uk or wherever you get your podcasts. This has been an I Am Listening original podcast. For more information, head over to our website, im-listening.co.uk. Listener.